Provenge is the only FDA-approved cancer vaccine. It's for patients with metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer. Now, the way Provenge works is the patient will go to their physician's office. They'll undergo a process called leukophoresis, which is a massive blood draw. Their blood is then sent to a central processing facility. It's uh, manipulated in the laboratory to mature certain types of cells into dendritic cells. Those cells are then pulsed with the antigen. That effectively is the vaccine, which is then shipped back to the patient's treating physician, and then it's administered to the patient once every other week for three inoculations. So you can see where that's a very intricate process. You can see where there's a lot of steps where you could have an issue. For instance, you didn't have enough blood to mature enough dendritic cells. It also comes at a ex uh, very significant expense. Um, I don't know the numbers right now for Provenge, but when it was first marketed, it was pretty close to $100,000 per patient. So now looking at peptide vaccines, what is that? Well, as I said in my presentation, a peptide is a small piece of a protein, and it's enough of the protein that you can have it be presented to your immune system, and then your immune system can be educated to recognize it so that in the future, if it were to see this peptide, it would recognize the cell as foreign, would attack and destroy it. A peptide is, again, just a nine amino acid sequence, so you basically can go to any number of processing facilities, get them to make this up. It comes as a powder, so it's what we call lyophilized. It's then reconstituted with normal saline or water for injection, and then it's given as a simple shot. Um, it's given subdermally. Patients receive one inoculation per month for six months, and then they get booster inoculations, much like we do with our tetanus or other infectious disease vaccines. So you can see where if the peptide vaccine approach was proven efficacious, that it would be um, very simple to produce, it would be very cost effective, and therefore I think more widely used than some of these more complex vaccine constructions. Now, the flip side of that is that it probably is not going to stimulate enough of an immune response or a robust enough immune response to take care of very aggressive disease, which is why I emphasize the fact that we are investigating these peptide vaccines in the adjuvant setting, so after patients have been rendered disease-free with standard therapy, as opposed to in the metastatic setting where patients tend to have big bulky tumors that it's a little bit more difficult to rev up the immune system to take care of those.